welcome everyone. If those who can, would they stand and uh, join us in our opening hymn, page 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. Welcome, everyone. Is there any announcements? Yes. I just want to remind everybody that next Saturday will be the Summer Festival here in St. Clair. Our church will be participating by handing out water bottles and free homemade ice cream and also, Pastor Laura and I are planning to have a booth right across the street. They're going to have uh, children's activities and booths for the churches. So we will be sharing with St. John a booth over there, and uh, we plan to have beanbag toss and a couple of other things like that. So it should be a really fun time. Also, the Lonedale School will be having their bazaar there that day, too. So it's a fun-filled day for everybody, and you can make it to both. Anybody else? Got anything? <clears throat> okay, um, if you'd all join me in the call to worship. From God came the sustenance for people who wandered in the wilderness. Wilderness places. For God comes, Jesus Christ, the eternal bread that sustains our lives. Let us praise God for such wondrous gifts of life. Good morning, everybody. We are back, but we are jet lagged. Uh, we had a wonderful vacation, but now we need a vacation from the vacation because, of course, it was very hectic, but it was a beautiful wedding and all went well. <clears throat> I hope everything was the same here. I spoke with Linda Matthews. Well, actually, I texted with her yesterday. Uh, as many of you know, Dave Matthews had gone back into the hospital. He had pneumonia and uh, 
congestive heart failure. He was in the ICU, and she said that he's out of the ICU now, he's in a regular ward, and ho she's hoping to bring him home today. So that's really good news. We need to continue to pray for him. Uh, also, Debbie Camper Maupin, those of you who know her from the uh, Fairview Church, will be having knee surgery, knee replacement surgery this Monday. So please keep her in your prayers as well. Are there any others? Yes. Oh my goodness, okay. Yes, we need to pray for both. Are there any others? Yes, Bill, how you doing? Is it a birthday or? No, okay, all right. Okay, prayers for Bill. Uh, although in all honesty, we all need prayers, right? Yes. Thank you for that. That is a blessing. Um, are there any others? <clears throat> if not, then let us pray. Holy Spirit, you call us to love one another as Christ has loved us. You call us to sacrifice for one another as Christ has sacrificed for us. You call us to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. How much we want to follow your will for our lives. But the reality is that our anger and bitterness, resentments, frustrations, and judgments of others get in the way. Our human emotions too often control our actions, and we end up doing or saying those things that break down community and understanding rather than building up the body of Christ. And so, as we ask for your forgiveness, we also ask for your strength and guidance as we seek once again to be the people you would have us be. We need your forgiveness, for we are hard on ourselves. We feel the weight of our guilt and shame and easily condemn ourselves. We stand in need of your grace to free us from the burdens we carry to equip us to be your beloved children and to live in love and peace with one another. As members of the body of Christ, we lift prayers for our community and for ourselves. For our nation, we lift prayers for relief from the increased violence and fear that are so prevalent. We pray for the homeless, the unemployed, the addicted, those suffering from physical or mental illness, and those who grieve some loss in their lives. At this time, we lift up to you those we hold silently in our hearts. We lift prayers for our elderly that they might live with dignity and respect. We lift prayers for our youth that they might be filled with visions of hope for the future. We lift prayers for each one of us that we might find purpose and meaning in our lives. Lead us, loving God, so that we may imitate your ways and walk in your love. All of this we ask in the name of the one who said, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> and now at this time we will have our second hymn, Let Us Break Bread Together. And now we will have our scripture readings. First reading is from Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians 4, verse 25. So when putting away falsehoods, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have someone to share with the needy. Something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for the building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving and <clears throat> one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Try not to lean on the on this. Okay. Uh, would you all stand for the reading of the the gospel? Jesus said to them, "I am the bread of life." Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, 
and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, it is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. Not one, <clears throat> no one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught <clears throat> and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life and I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for life of the... <clears throat> and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. In this morning's gospel lesson, we see Jesus after he has just performed the miracle of feeding 5,000 or even more with the couple of fish and the couple of loaves of bread. So Jesus has been working pretty hard, and he tells the disciples that he's going to move on to another place where maybe there can be some quiet time for him. But of course, as we see very often in the Bible, it's very hard for Jesus to get away by himself and have some time to himself. So by the time he gets to where he's going, uh, people are coming already. And they're surprised to see him. They found out where he was going, and they're surprised that he got there so fast without their knowing about it and that he got there before them. And so they ask him, how did you get here so fast? Now, Jesus doesn't answer their question. He tells them about something else. He says, you know, you're not coming here uh, asking questions and wanting to know uh, about the scriptures and whatnot. You're coming here because you've been fed and you've been healed and you've been made to feel good about yourself. And you're coming here thinking that there's going to be another meal, another free meal, and good things whenever we're together. But Jesus says, you are looking in the wrong direction. Everybody has a hunger inside. And Jesus is talking to them in symbolism, through symbols. Jesus says everybody has this hunger inside and people need something spiritual to satisfy this hunger because the hunger that people have inside is a spiritual hunger. That is what they need and Jesus tells them that he is able also to help them with that. Jesus says everybody has a spiritual hunger and everybody needs to be spiritually satisfied in their heart. And Jesus says that is what I have come to do. Not just to feed you and heal you and take care of you. Of course, you need those things. But what you really need 
is something to fill that hunger inside you, that thing that you're hungering for, that everybody is hungering for. And you know, it's the same for us now. It's been the same for all people ever since Adam and Eve. Everyone has a hunger deep inside them to be loved and accepted just for who they are. Now remember, back in Jesus' day, if you, were, if you had a chronic illness or if you had a mental or physical challenge of any kind, you were considered to be unclean because it meant if you were suffering from those things that you were a sinner. You must have sinned, and God was punishing you with these challenges and with these chronic illnesses. And so the rules were back then that the people who had these maladies, these issues, were considered unclean. And if they came near people who were clean, they had to announce that so that people could move away from them. Because to be touched or even sometimes in close proximity with these people that have challenges and chronic illnesses was to be made unclean yourself. And these poor people who suffered from these maladies, they were ostracized and meant to live apart from the rest of society. And if they were to get too close to people who were clean, ritually clean, they were to announce that they were there and call out, unclean, unclean. So the people would have the option of going away and moving away from them so that they would not be defiled as well. But everybody has that hunger deep inside to be loved and accepted just for being, for who they are and not just for what they do no matter what they're accomplishing, have accomplished, may accomplish in the future. Apart from all that, everybody has that spiritual need deep inside of them that needs to be satisfied. And Jesus talks to them in symbol, symbolism. He tells them that they have a spiritual need. It needs to be met spiritually, and that the nourishment will come in the form of Jesus himself. He is the bread of life, and the words that he speak are the bread of life and the living bread in this world. We all need that. People then needed that, and Jesus was trying to explain that. And we know we need that ourselves. Because when things go wrong, and they will in everybody's life, when everything else in this life fails, our faith is the final frontier. That is what we have left. That one final thing that we can appeal to, that we can go to, And we know that there's a loving being who cares about us, who loves us, and who wants the best for us. Because so many people find it hard to believe in something, find it hard to have that faith. But when you rely only on yourself or the things that the world has to offer, There will be times when they're not enough. When they are just not enough to fill that spiritual need, we need that spiritual nourishment, that living bread, that bread of life. We see that uh, in the media And in the news these past couple weeks, especially when we've been looking at the athletes, right? Those who have gone to the Olympics and those who were preparing 
to go to the Olympics. We hear about Naomi Osaka. She is the number one women's tennis player in the world, and she is also the highest paid female athlete in the world right now. But Naomi Osaka was in the French Open, and after the games, they are required to speak to the press. But she said that she could not do that because of her mental health. She has mental health issues, <clears throat> and people of the press oftentimes um, pick too deeply. They scrape away the surface and they ask questions that were triggering for her. She has some kind of uh, mental health issue. It could be depression, it could be anxiety, it could be any number of things. But she wants to be loved and accepted for who she is, not for what she can do, not for the endorsements she has, not for the fame she has, and not for the great accomplishment of being the number one woman tennis player or the highest paid female athlete in the world. She has that spiritual hunger that can only be fed by something spiritual. And so she made a lot of news when she pulled out of the French Open <clears throat> and also Wimbledon. She had to do it for her mental health, she says. And we know the same thing with Simone Biles. We've been hearing about her for months now, haven't we? That she is the top female gymnast and that she's done things that no female gymnast has ever done before. In fact, she was the number one rated woman gymnast in the world. That's a, that is a lot of pressure for somebody to carry, to go to the Olympics, to be training for the Olympics, and to have the whole country and the whole world watching you to see what you're going to do. And you know, if you miss it by a half a point, it doesn't matter. If you don't get a medal, it doesn't matter. People are disappointed, and you're disappointed yourself. She had that same hunger, and so she had to pull out of some events, some major events for her in the Olympics to take care of her own mental health, that hunger deep inside, to be known and loved for just who she is. Then there's Shakari Richardson. Some of you may remember her. Very young, only 20 years old, uh, a great runner, and there were great um, hopes for her in the Olympics. And she was doing so well. But she ended up testing positive for marijuana. Now, the state that she lives in, it was completely legal for her to be smoking marijuana or to be using it either medicinally or recreationally. But that didn't matter because in the Olympics, it's a big no-no. And if you test positive for it, you're out. She said it, she smoked it. She took responsibility for making a blunder and big mistake. She knew that there was a likelihood that she could get caught and she could be not going to the Olympics because of that. And that's exactly what happened. But she said she was dealing with the death of her birth mother. She was raised by her grandmother. Now, we think of this, and there's a lot of family drama there that we're not hearing about. There's a lot of personal drama for herself that we're not hearing about. And we know many people use drugs and alcohol to self-medicate themselves. She said she needed to take care of herself because she was thrown for a loop by the death of her birth mother. When things get hard in this world and nothing else helps, we need that spiritual 
nourishment. People look for it in many ways. They look for it in drugs and alcohol and and many different ways. And that just isn't going to help. We know that Michael Phelps, probably the most decorated Olympic swimmer of all times, has talked about his mental health issues. And that at times he has seriously considered suicide. And even though he's no longer competing, he has tried to help people by being on all kinds of commercials and doing public service announcements trying to get people to understand that probably at least 50% of people in the U.S. have some kind of clinical mental health issue. And probably for the rest of us, we at least have some kind of mental health issue, whether it's clinical or not. Let's face it, things go wrong, and when all else fails, those of us of faith have something to lean on. When you have nothing else to lean on, where else can you go if you're not believing in anything? And it is hard for a lot of people to believe. People say, how can you believe in something like that? In a God that you can't see, that you can't touch, you can't hear, you can't smell, you can't taste. How can you believe in something like that? Well, I was remembering the words to an old song from the 1960s. And it says, as sure as I believe there's a heaven above, I believe there's something much more. Something even non-believers can believe in. I believe in love. Right? I think most people, even if they can't believe in God would say that they believe in love. Yet how can you prove it? How can you show it? I believe in love. And in 1 John 4, 16, the Bible says, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. It's that love that we need. That is the bread of life. And Jesus came to personify that, to be the person who shows us the bread of life and how to be an example for us so that we may try to live according to what Jesus has taught us. And then in our epistle lesson today, we hear St. Paul talking about the things that we need to get rid of in our lives so we can live as the people that God created us to be. So that we can receive that living bread, that bread of life, the only thing that can fulfill us, the only thing that can sustain us on the journey spiritual journey. Jesus knew that for every one of us, the spiritual journey would get really tough sometimes. It would be tough to remember even our faith and what God has done for us in the past. But we would have that living bread and we would come together with others to remember that we always have the living bread at our disposal Now, for those who are suffering from any kind of physical illness or loss, for those who are suffering from mental illnesses, mental health issues of some kind, we have resources. God gave us counseling. God gave us drugs that can help us. But they alone will not help us. We still need that spiritual nourishment. The only thing that will fulfill us and help us on our way. And so talking symbolism, we have another great symbol 
of the living bread, don't we? One that we will be celebrating today and one that we celebrate generally the first Sunday of every month here in church. It's called the Lord's Supper. And Jesus gave us this beautiful sacrament so that we could come together and help to nourish one another. We come together in communion, believing that Jesus is there with us and that all the believers and people who've gone before, all those we love, are there with us as well. And we're together with believers from all over the world, all who ever were and all who ever will be. And we come together to remember what Jesus did for us and how Jesus and that living bread are always there. The only thing that can satisfy us and help us on the spiritual journey because it will get tough. And Jesus never promised to take us out of the journey or to make the journey less tough. But he did promise to be there with us and to give us that living bread to help us through on our life journey. And so we come together to celebrate with the symbols that Jesus gave us to remind us of his sacrifice for us. We eat something that symbolizes the body of Christ that was broken for us, and we drink something that symbolizes the blood of Christ that was shed for us. And so we come together and we help one another again to lift each other up when things have gone so wrong and it's hard to remember the good things God has done for us in the past when it seems like there's no good on the horizon. We come together and remind each other. And as Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in a very special way with them. And so we know that Jesus is with us to give us that living bread that we all need on this spiritual journey. And so if you will turn to page 12 in your hymnals, we will begin our celebration of Holy Communion. Ladies upstairs, do you have Holy Communion up there to take? Can someone take, get some and take them to the bottom of the stairs and possibly one of you could come and get them? If you are joining us online, I want to let you know that we have an open communion table in the United Methodist Church. That means that anyone who loves Jesus, who earnestly repents of their sin, and seeks to live in peace with all people is welcome to join in our Lord's Supper. You will need to have something that will symbolize for you the body of Christ broken for you. It can be anything you have there. Pancakes, cereal, cookies, cracker, can be anything you have close at hand. You will need to have something that symbolizes the blood of Christ that was poured out for us as well. It could be anything you're drinking, coffee, tea, juice, milk, anything. For we believe that a person may actually be born again at the very first time that they receive this body and blood of Christ in the Lord's Supper. And now let us begin on page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart, 
We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God loves toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And continuing on page 13. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on each one of us gathered here and all who are gathered with us online and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Jesus comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will get our wafer from the top of our packs. If you are joining us at home, you may take whatever you are using to symbolize the body of Christ broken for us. And then take whatever it is that you have to symbolize the blood of Christ broken for us. Amen. And now this is the part of our service where we would normally collect our tithes, gifts, and offerings for the Lord. Because of COVID, we are not doing this. We have two plates in the back of the church. One is for your donations, tithes, gifts, and offerings for the church. And one is for the same for the Agape House. Uh, If you are joining us online, you will see a way at the bottom of your screen where you may also contribute, uh, and anybody may also mail in their contributions to the church as well. And now at this time, I'll ask Darren if he would please play our doxology. And please stand and sing with our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, if you will please join in our prayer of dedication, which you will find in our in your bulletin. Patient and merciful God, we hear your call to live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Our ears hear these words in our worship. Our minds know what they mean. Our hearts long to follow them. But we know that tomorrow we will be tempted to slip into the familiar life where we ourselves are at the center of our world and the needs we focus on are almost entirely our own. In our giving this day, help us strengthen our resolve to love as Christ loves us, for it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And now I have a favor to ask of you, and that is that you would wait for Mike and I to process before you leave the sanctuary so that I can still get to know you by name without your face masks on. If you would do that, I would appreciate it. Uh, Please join in our closing hymn, which is in the small little book, The Faith We Sing, number 2153, I'm going to live so God can use me.
Receive the blessing. Go now in love and peace, remembering that every single person wants to be loved and accepted for who they are. Take that message out with you that we have something that will satisfy that spiritual hunger deep within each person. We have the living bread of life personified in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Take that message out with all of you into all the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>